Lab 10, a uh, programming tool, aggregation of user information in Linux. In this uh, lab, we are going to practice pro programming by implementing a simple pro script for aggregation of group and user information in the Linux system. We have three tasks need to be complete and uh, four review questions. In this task, you are asked to write a program and name it as sysstates.pl. Uh, it's combined together. That uh, can aggregate the information of groups and users on the Linux computer. And for each uh, subtask here, complete the implementation code and its a test. The format of the output and the report file generated by your program Oops, the type here must be identical to this one. Here, when you check this one, there's the output of your program. You can see a demo. Here are some more comments. Here, when you run this program, process desktop here, you need to generate these outputs. Statistics about groups and users uh, on computer. Here, you need to change to your computer name and uh, group stat statistics, user statistics. You need to uh, provide this information. You, we have done this lab in Bash. Now we, we are going to redo the lab with a Perl script. Here you see the large groups has uh, have two users. And these groups are, here you see, uh, there's just uh, one group, group admin, has uh, users syslog and xp. And the user's statistics, the most searchable users are in 10 groups. And these users are, here you see, uh, again, there is only one most searchable user in these groups. Then you are asked to type the file name to save the statistics. Save it as records.txt. When you show the contents of this records.txt, you see this output are, outputs are exactly the program output from these statistics and this uh, before this type of file name. Here you see everything is exactly like that, right? The user XP. So these are the formats you need to accomplish and your output must uh, comply with this uh, format. And three templates are provided to achieve three uh, subtasks. The first one, find the largest groups and the users with this uh, getcmd.out.pl. Find the most uh, searchable users who join the maximum number of groups and the groups they are in. Use this template as user.pl and save the statistics about in a report file record to this record.pl In the review questions, uh, two pro programs are provided. One is the pserver.pl and the other one is the pclient.pl pserver.pl is a TCP server, pclient.pl is a TCP client and they can communicate with each other. The server will accept some input from the client, for example IPv4 address or IPv4 integers, then it will uh, do the conversion as we did in one of our lab. And uh, we will create a system D service with this uh, template and the pserver.pl then it run as a service. You can uh, communicate with the service through this pclient.pl or this ncat. So these are the tasks we are going to complete today. Now let's create a folder to hold everything we are going to create today. And it's 372. Uh, I would like to uh, pull all the updated information. We cloned uh, everything from the Git, GitHub, right? Get these things. So you type pull. Oops, uh, git pull. Bad. Then you see uh, everything, uh, every updates are downloaded. 
go to the lab slab 10 code copy all this code Con uh, Control C go back here create a folder create a lab 10 And paste everything here. Again, we will use the uh, Visual Studio Code. For the first one, you are asked to use uh, the get CMD. Oh. Get CMD out dot peer. That means get the command output. Here you can check the comments, these comments to see what the script is used to. Here we have packages, then we are you can see Perl can be integrated with interact with commander batch command gluelessly. Here you are asked to type this command and find all groups. Type this command to find the description of this uh, group file. So you can do it by yourself. I think uh, you may practice this one in our bash programming. Here you see you can use QX to uh, follow by uh, the bash command. Cut the contents of this uh, etc group file and save it in a variable. We save all groups in a variable. Here we can uh, inside a uh, lab 10, open a terminal window here. If you type cat etc group, you see all the groups and each group and uh, their users here, the users, right? The users group ID, the group name, here this is uh, the computer, what does this X mean? So we need to uh, check main file group to see the explanation about each field. We know these are the group of members, right? Here and, uh, this is the group name, group ID, so what does X mean? You type man file to find the menu on this uh, group file. You can see group name, password, GID, user list. So this is uh, password. But it uh, uses X. If it's empty, no password is needed. If there is X, it looks like this, uh, the group password. Here is the password. Empty no no password is needed. So that X is a password. I don't know. You can go down to see. Uh, we didn't see any characters represent uh, the one. We just consider password is needed. You can uh, go online to find further informations. Uh, we saved uh, save the contents of this uh, group file into this variable. Then we split the con the variable line by line. Right, you split with this uh, new line symbol. Then we get an array, save the lines. Then print out, create a hash to save all groups and their uh, members. Create an empty group. Then for each line, we iterate through all the lines. For each line, we split with the column and get uh, the columns. And number of columns must be four if the group contains members. So you can check here. Right? If that is only three, you see 
the member list is empty, so there must be four columns. Then you have uh, members. So here this scalar followed by this array means you find its length. The length equals four. Then you use this uh, I group temporary library, a uh, temporary uh, variable. You split the members with a common right here. The list of members they are separated with common. So you split with a common. And I pay attention to this cost negative one, which means the last column. The last column, the list of members. Then you are add this uh, list of group of members which just save its reference here right? it's a reference we save to this uh, hash this group groups hash and indexed with this uh, zeros column the first column the first column is a group name right? this is a group name so it's hash indexed by group name and save the list of users Else, if there is a there is no four columns, which means there are empty groups. Create an empty uh, array and uh, save the reference. So this is uh, the first part. Now we have those stuff. Actually, we can run this program to have a look. Create a new tab and run it. Per cmd.pr and you see the first part list out here oops well we have something print out here one create a hash to save all groups and their members here we only print out we actually we print out every line Right, uh, which part we print out every line here? Do you see column zero followed by a semicolon, then followed by the groups, uh, followed by the members. Right, for example, admin that has two members. So print out like this. This is the array. Save the the list of users in that group. Then uh, this is one and two. Two front members are in each group. So we come to two. One we see uh, what the output it is, and uh, you s you can compare this output with the output here to make sure you get the correct. Uh, Result. We can compare one. For example, one compare two special cases. The empty case GBM. Here you see GBM. There is no members, and this uh, Republican four or three three uh, users. Right? Yeah, Republican three users. Okay, it uh, it looks good now. Second one, find the number of members in each group and the number of the largest groups. So we just need to find the length of this array, of the groups array, right? Here we loop through the groups hash using its key. The keys here, this is a current key, right? We know this uh, current variable. This is dollar underscore. This is the key, and you will use that key to index into the <coughs> groups. You use scalar to find its length. The length is the number of users. To find the maximum number, we use this uh, threshold statements, the question mark and the column. 
when if max is larger than uh, number users, then we update. We will leave it. Otherwise, we will update it with the, <coughs> the current number of users. And print out each group and the number of users inside that group. Then we find the largest uh, group here. You can see the result here. Group facts has zero users. They are all output uh, by this line, line 32. And we check those two special uh, case, the GVM. And the end. GVM has zero users. And uh, that uh, Republican, now you see the water is uh, different from what we get before. Republican has three users, so it looks good. Usually check a program, just check the boundary cases. Now on the last one, find all the largest groups. We just compare the, the length of each group with this max. Right? Here we find, again, we iterate through groups and compare the number of users inside the group with this max number. Then we can print out the, all these groups here. The largest group has a number of users, and uh, its members are here. This is the output. Has three users. These uh, members are here. Oh, this first one looks good, and uh, you can see uh, we use the uh, hash here to save each group and uh, its members. And we use a QX to save the output of the bash co command into a per variable. The second one finds the most searchable users with this suser.pl. So we can draw it first. Okay, now you see the output here. The other output username, list of groups, the users joined. Yeah. Separated with this uh, column, number of groups the user joined. Here there are three columns right? username, list of groups, the user joined. Here, for example, again, let's check that GVM. Oh, GVM is, is I don't think that is GVM user, maybe. Here you can check this one. Nixon, the user inside the three groups, Nixon, Sudo, and Republican. So he is in three groups. How do you check a special case? For example, let's check that uh, LP. How do we check it? We use ID command, right? ID LP. You have user have a group, a single group. So the LP is a single group. Its name is also called uh, LP. ID dash uh, N. We used it before. What, what's the? Uh, we can use group. Group or groups LP. Groups. Groups LP. So you see uh, LP is inside group LP. Or you use that ID command as we uh, used it before. How to use it? I forgot it. Show the name. So we use a dash uh, UG, right? ID dash UG LP. Dash UGG. So I think it's a dash ang.
So you only show the group name, the user LP inside. Again, we can interact, uh, or we can collect this result into a providable. Check that uh, as user pair. Please read these uh, comments by yourself. Here we use this uh, get end find the password, and you can find the description of the format of this password file. We use similar techniques as the previous one. Find all users on Linux machine and save them in a variable here. User out, maybe you just call the users. Then we split line by line. Again, we create an empty hash. Here, actually, we can have a look to see what that one looks like. We use a get and password. Right here, you see a username x. I think I just like the previous one. Means there is a there is a password. Here, these are the IDs. User ID, group ID. I don't think it's. I don't know. We can check what it is. Here, the bash and the home folder. So again, you can find main file, password. And you see the. Okay, it's user ID, group ID, username or command field, user home directory, option. Uh, user command interpreter how many fields do we have we have seven fields right seven fields here there's a share now you see uh, uh, here is a home folder group group id user id means that it has a password then the, the user so we have seven fields. Again, we we create uh, an empty array. This array is used to save the groups that our users is in. Right? We index with the username. Here, because of with this command, we we cannot get uh, all the uh, groups a user is in, so this is not a good choice. You may use the good choice, use that uh, ID. ID dash uh, ng followed by a user username. Then you get all his or her groups. So use this command is better than this one. Right? Get end password, you get something like this, then you uh, we extract the username, but we cannot get the groups. For example, this is Nixon. I say why the groups Nixon is in. We use the ID command, we will get it. So we use another techniques with these groups. Now you see these groups, we also need uh, extra processing. We iterate through the users. Then we use this uh, groups command to get the groups that the users are in. And the format is like this. Right? Since the format is like this, we separate with the empty space. So empty space, you will get a one term, two term, three term, four term, and so on. Now, that column is also considered as uh, one. This uh, column is also considered as one term. And we know it's index from zero, so zero, one, two. So the groups from two. Here, that's why right here you see from two, and the last index. You know this is the length of that array, right? So the length of that array is a cross. We split it to get an array. So now you see this uh, command is uh, 
not as good as this one. This is id dash ng nixon. You feel free to use this one. It's up to you. Now we print out. We push the groups that the users in into its uh, value. We know this hash. The key is the username. The value is the array to save all the groups. Then we find the number of groups each user joined in and print out. And you see the result here. And we verified that uh, it's right. Now this is the second one. And you can uh, improve this one by replacing these groups dollar underscore with this uh, id dash nglp or username the last one save the statistics to this uh, record.pl so for the record.pl uh, have a look to see what it looks like Again, you see here it uh, try to find the users. Create a hash to save all users. Use each username is a key and so on. Here, this part, the main uh, idea is uh, how to uh, save information into a file. Create a file named records.txt here. We open it. Pay attention to this one. This means. Uh, for write, open it for writing. This plus means if uh, it does not exist, we will create it. I think it uh, may also include. We may need to uh, check whether this plus also means uh, add uh, read capabilities. This one, uh, this code. You see it's uh, from the suuser.pl. And here, how to save the number of groups each user joined in. You just uh, use this print, print it to this file handle with these strings. These strings will be printed into this uh, file handle. Once you're done, close it, then you open it. Here, it uh, open this file for reading. Then you open uh, read a single line. To read a single line, you just uh, read it once. To read them out, every line out, we use a wire loop. Then you print out this single line. Now the first line is printed out. Next, if we want to read out all the lines from the first line, but uh, because you read uh, one line and we didn't close it, the read position will move to the second line. So that's why we need the seek command to move the read header to the first line. Seek file handle zero zero. So you can check the help of this seek function. What does this parameters mean? I think maybe this is the offset and this is the reference point. Reference zero means reference to the start of the file and offset is zero, so we moved the read pointer to the start of this file. Here we use this one uh, with an array. Then we read out all the lines. This is a quick method. Here we use a we use a scalar variable. It will read out only one line. Here we use a we use an array. All the lines will be read out. Then we print out and close the file. Let's have a look. I'll run it. Pro is a uh, record up here. Okay, you see a file re records txt is generated, and you see uh, the output line six. Read all the lines from the file. Right? The username. List of, of groups, 
the user join is output by line 65 then you see with this uh, array we get all the lines and the single line here read a single line you will see you only get this uh, syslog now you see how convenient it is to read a text file Now we can uh, see the contents, check the content of this records.txt uh, here. Do you see it? Right? These are the contents when we print uh, print each line to the file handle. Inside this uh, group, or inside this uh, for loop. Okay, now we have all the components. How do we construct this program and uh, let output these things? First, we need to create a program named this right, sysstates.peer. Uh, okay, we save it here. Touch. This uh, states dot pair. and you see the show up here. Now we want to uh, use components from these programs. Right. Place here now. Please uh, add comments to make it uh, readable. And the comments you actually you can uh, copy from this output here. There's comments. As as usual to write it in a nice format, for example, like this, one, two, three, four. Now, we want to uh, first find the large groups and their users. We can copy these lines and put here as comments. In a company, when you are assigned tasks to complete part of a big software, you should have the software specifications. So you can copy those specifications into your source code as uh, comments. Here we know that find the largest uh, groups and the users we use this uh, program. Save all groups in your variable until uh, here, right? And you'll see can we now we'd better hide those print. How do we hide it? We can use a constant Oops, I forgot the per constant how to write it. I think I, I did in our last lab. In our lab nine we use a constant so we can go there to have a look. You check lab 9, check the code, see how do we specify a constant, use uh, this one. Now we go back here.
we want to hide those uh, debug can use zero because we already uh, test all these units now for these two lines how do we hide it we can use uh, unless huh? Unless or, or if that a uh, single statement again, you can check this uh, M9. How do we use that one? I will use it like this. Or we use a uh, if here. I think I made a mistake when I use uh, use if uh, put it here. Since we have two lines, let's use if. Yeah, in debug. Use the debug is na enabled, then we print out. Otherwise, we just hide it. Create group. Come here again. We have a print. I want to uh, find the. single statements or pro if a single line pro single line if It's not what we want. This is a tertiary uh, operator, ternary operator. Here there is a if, uh, see here it is, single line, if conditional. How do we write it? If name equals something, uh, if defined, unless defined, so could we use to if these are uh, in debug? Here we have multiple lines. We use this if behind the work. Now we loop slow uh, these groups. Here again we have uh, some printout.
Okay, before you add uh, other f functions, you can run this program. Enable it to see whether you, because we modified some code to see whether we still be able to get the result we want. It looks good. We have all these things. Now we have all the max group. Then we want to find the searchable, the most searchable users. And from this uh, S user. Yeah, now we copy this part. But in this uh, program, I didn't show the most searchable user. Now we have some variables uh, we used in our first part, but we redefined uh, again. And we need to uh, we need to check those uh, variables to see, for example, these lines. So we will get errors. When you get rid of this mine. For example, we can run it to have a look to see the error. Username list. It looks like I, I define it again. It's, a, it's fine. It's just uh, create a new one for me, maybe. Now for this one, the users, first let's uh, hide this uh, output. Now I need to find the most searchable user, as we did in this first part, find the most group, right? So we need to find the max number here, of these uh, num groups. My let's say max groups. How do we make that meaningful? Here it means uh, find the most uh, sociable users. So let's just call it max g. You may figure out a more meaningful and readable, maintainable variable name. When we loop through each user, right, and find the number of groups that a user is in, we can compare this one. Update this uh, max g. Use the ternary uh, operator. Max g, if it's larger than this num groups, then 
we will keep its original value. Otherwise, we will update it with these num groups. In this case, we find the most uh, searchable user. And we can combine. No, we cannot combine. We still need uh, one more loop because we don't know the the most uh, searchable user yet. We loop through the users again. And here we compare we use this one. We compare it with this uh, max g. Then we know this is uh, the most searchable user, so we can. Uh, now, how do we print out here? We check the format we need to uh, comply with user statistics, the first one is uh, group statistics. In the user statistics, we need to output these lines, and these users are, yeah, I didn't list out here. And user XP is in uh, groups, these groups. Okay, we need to print out something like this. something like this. Here user we substitute with the uh, add rate available. Because the user is in groups. And if we, we output the groups. We know we can output with this uh, array. So we have done this part, so we can do it to have a look. Now we have uh, arrows. Mask the earlier declaration in same scope. Line 91. 91, the lines we already declared. Line 136 syntax error. One three six here. So it says here I have a mistake here. You're just missing a curly bracket at the end. Curly brackets at an empty space? Yeah, right before the slash M. Uh, yes, thank you. I uh, missed one. Curly brackets. Uh, 
Okay, now you see uh, we we got this uh, most sociable user in these groups, right? Here you see these these groups. So we finished the second part. Then we need to uh, finish the last part. Save the statistics. Since the statistics they are all output from these uh, two parts, so we need to. Uh, modify these two parts and also we want to create a variable to save all the output so we can create an output uh, let's say at here my records is the empty string and create a file handle now we need to for the group statistics first uh, we need to show something like this I copy this part at the beginning to show that one is okay we can print it out here but maybe it's better print out uh, when we call the result the group stuff here we call the group stuff here but I think uh, we can put it in front of here Print out this part. And print out this line. So this takes about uh, groups and users on computer. Now, how do we get the computer name? The com computer name Anyone knows how to get the computer name? For example, here the computer name is uh, CIT Host name, right? It's a host name Here you see the host name is CIT so we need to subject with a uh, host name. Now, how do we do that? We use this qx command. If so, uh, we still need to de de uh, declare a variable. My, let's say, host name equals qx host name. Then I can replace this uh, host name with hn wh dollar uh, hn. This host name. We need to add a new line. So this is the first part. Then we need to output group statistics. Something like this. Group statistics. Where did you find the largest group? Largest group we find uh, we find here, right? It's a largest group. Oops, I think I somewhere I made a made a typo. Here, I made a typo here. And now we come here, find the largest group, show up here, so we can print out what we, we need to print out. Group statistics, so we print out the group statistics here. And 
print out this line. Then we need to show the largest uh, group has two users and uh, these groups are Here the largest group have so many users. The largest group ha has two have two users, so have so many users. We can use this line. So now actually we can get rid of these things. Do you think it's a good idea? Maybe we'd better leave those uh, debugs, right? And put it here. We need to print out the largest group have so many users. Just copy this line. And uh, here these groups are going to see. And you see there there is a empty line. So we need a uh, two new lines here. Then we show up the group them has uh, users like this. How do we show them? We use this one. Uh, we use this loop. We need to show something here inside this loop. Group has uh, users like this. These are the largest groups. So we need a group name. The group name is a uh, in is this a uh, current uh, iterator variable right so we print here we replace this uh, adm with the current uh, iterator variable has users now this one is this part So we are done the group statistics. Actually, we can run it to have a look. Here you check the, the groups. The largest group has three users. These groups are, I think, which part is the part we output? We disable. Uh, did we disable our uh, debug? Okay. Disable it. Here there's a user part for the group part. Statistics about groups and users on this computer CIT. Then we see group statistics. We can compare with this uh, output the format right then you are here you see we have a problem here we didn't add a new line the largest groups has three users and uh, these groups are here group republican has users done and done and this uh, this is from the second part
So we have done this first part, and there is a problem here. We can solve that problem is uh, at this place. We didn't add a new line. Now for the second part. For the second part, what do we need to output? We need to output a uh, user statistics. Here's the second output. This is the second part. Uh, second part. Second part. We let's output it. Uh, uh, output it here. We are asked to find the most uh, searchable user. At this place, we get the most searchable user. So we can put it here. Print. And please pay attention to those uh, new lines. How many uh, new lines you need? Okay, now we output the most searchable users. But here you see uh, we output this stuff. Here, where I output this stuff, we need to comment that out. I think it's uh, this one, this line. Right? user group and uh, number of groups so this one we did in the comment uh, out this is not common out and how do we quite anyway you can quite uh, we just uh, disable the debug output now we want to uh, output something like this The most searchable users. We put it here. So the most uh, searchable users, we already get the max g here, right? So we can uh, put this to line here, and they are, and this you can output in this loop. Type it uh, quickly. Print. Now we need to output this line. We know this one uh, we want to. Uh, Get rid of it. So we print out. Actually, you see it's uh, exactly that line. So we just need this line. Right? User is in groups, then you print out all the groups. So that's what we need. And save it, then we run it to verify the result. Here, the user statistics, the most sort of user, in the, these users are, so it looks good. And you need to check the format. The format, pay attention to the new lines. Here, there is one empty line. Here, you will have an empty line. It looks like I have two empty lines here. Right? 
then use the statistics here I need to add one more new line at the these users are the new line and these, these users are so we the users are add one more new line oops then you output the most searchable users okay I think now it uh, looks good you can run it to have a look you need to compare with the time output from this uh, statistics from here pay attention to those new lines everything looks uh, almost uh, exactly the same most search of users these users are in groups done and done now save the stuff type the file name to save the statistics how do we reach the input? I forgot here type the file name again we, we use a print right? and you see it, the file name is just show adjacent to this uh, prompt so we don't need a new line here otherwise uh, you know, record need to type in the second line to get the the input we use uh, we create a new new variable name let's call it file name my dollar fn file name equals we use a uh, standard in right? std in is call this or we just uh, write like this then you type the name you get the file name we can have a try here print file name as a debug the file name is fn you will run it here it says type the file name to save the statistics again where well, you need to type it you need two new lines so we need two, two new lines After that output, now you type uh, the file name records.txt and it says the file name is records.txt. So this looks good. Now, how do we uh, write the contents into the file? We, we know we just use print, right? So we need, need a variable to collect what is output. As we defined here, this uh, variable is used to to uh, collect all the all the output. So that a fair handle we may put it at the end to make them more readable or maintainable and maintainable. Put it here. What lines do we need to uh, collect into that uh, records? Variable here. Yeah, this records variable as a string. We can collect all these uh, here. These two lines we need to collect. Right? So we need to collect these two lines. How do we collect? We collect like this. Records. We we use a string concatenation. Concatenate with this line. Then concatenate with the second line. Scroll down. We need to find those uh, output we need to uh, collect. Here, this one we need to. Uh, no, not this one. Here, this two.
Yeah, there's a pot. Then this line. Oops. Okay, this uh, groups now the users we need to uh, collect all these outputs. The quick way to type your code. And the last line we need to collect. We can add a debugger to output these uh, records. Print the records. And run it here. Do you see this first part? Statistics about some something. And here, here you see again. See uh, statistics about some something. Then you are asked to type a file name. So the second part is output by this point of records. Well, it looks good, right? So you, you can type a control D to, to cancel it. Again, you can use an if you end debug. Then, how do you save it? Save it is uh, quite easy, right? We need to open the file handle, and now we, we use the method from here. Here you see print those stuff, and then open pot. How do we open it? Here. Open this one. Just copy copy this one. We call it name. Now we need this FL. FN, this file name. This file name. Then we uh, write the records. Those records we use is uh, print, just print to this file handle. Right? Use this one. And you, you can, when you pay attention, there's no comma between the file handle and the string you want to output you want to uh, print into this file. We want to print out our records, right? Once it's done, we just close it. Close this uh, file handle. So this part is done. And you check this uh, demo. Here, once you type the file name, you save it. Then you can uh, cut its output. The output you will show these things. Group statistics, users statistics. Okay, we can run it to have a look. 
here you see the this output looks good now type a file name you can create any name here let's just create a records.txt and it's done you see a records.txt is generated but I have two records.txt here as star.txt it's just one but here it shows two anyway it looks like the bug or the just record now you cat records dot txt oh I didn't get the one I need and I, I you see this record this is our previous one Let's remove this uh, records.txt. So we have some problem in our code and we didn't handle those exceptions. Type of file name records.txt. Done. Rh records.txt cannot access no such file so which means when we uh, try to create a file here we didn't uh, make it right so open it here we open it, print it, then close it here in this part you can uh, add some exception handy Ninth types file name the cost.txt I still didn't get this uh, records.txt so what's the problem happening here? I get the file name, then I open it. Right? I open it and uh, print the result to this file handle and close it. So you can uh, check this uh, Records dot text where I get this one. You can see it's a folder lab ten records dot txt. Why I didn't get it here? So this is a uh, quite interesting. Okay, now you see something here. Records.txt and with this kind of name. So why do, do we, uh, did we get some name like this? We didn't use the chop. So chop to get rid of the new line and the at the end of the input so we can uh, remove that uh, record star but this one is called uh, records.txt right? here you uh, have something uh, called this thing Actually, we can output its contents first to have a look. And you see the outputs are good. Uh, the contents of this file is good. So that just this file name, we didn't get it right. And you see when it uh, show up here, it show as a records.txt. That's interesting, right? And that this part is not shown in this list.
Okay, now uh, we can run it again. Cannot modify this handler near this part. So I use a chomp here, it uh, cannot be a uh, right like this. Save it. Okay, type the name. Records.txt. And you see that uh, there is one shop. The records.txt does not show up. Records.txt. And uh, one shop. So, how do I get the file name? I type directs.txt and I get one here. I chomp this one and then I get a, a one. So this I just forgot all these things. Okay, the file name we can go to get the user input. User input we did in our last lab. Last lab when we try to get the user input in the net plan. Right? The net plan, how do we get the user input? For example, if we want to uh, get the user input in this part, we use something like this, standard in. So, without that standard in, it will work weirdly. We can add this chomp like this. Chomp. Save it. Now let's uh, do it again. Here you see this one, it uh, holds the content we just uh, printed out. So everything looks good. Just remove that one. Then we run the program again. FN requires explicit package name. Have a name records.txt and it is saved to records.txt. Now you check here this part we got a records.txt over there, right? But uh, we need to verify here because as of last time it uh, the new line inside the file name will not be shown here. Okay, now we finally get the result records.txt. You cut this records.txt and you get the contents here. Okay, that's it. We complete this uh, task here. Complete all the tasks. Then we are going to solve this uh, review question. For this review question, first play with these programs. So we open two terminal window here. The left one, let's run that uh, server, P server. Perl, P server dot PL. Here you will see something says server waiting for client connection on port 46323. So on the right panel, here on the right panel, I run P client. It says connect to uh, this uh, server and enter long integer or IPv4 address. Let's uh, 
enter IP before address uh, first, for example, 8.8.8. Oops. Then you see uh, send this request or length 7 to the server, we get a result, the integer. On the server side, you see it says connect you know, from this uh, client uh, from with this port number, received a request. So you see it's a conversion between the long integer and the IP uh, for address. We run it again. And you see a connection again with a different uh, port number, the client port number. Now we type an integer. Let's type this integer. Paste here. We receive the result. So it's not this result. So it looks like we have a problem in the we have a problem in the program. Get something like this. It's not uh, this 8.8.8. .8. So now let's uh, check the program. Here we have two program. P server. And you can see here the server waiting for a client connection. This is a TCP server. Here you see the TCP. If you want to learn more about uh, network programming in Pro, you can check the, this module. Now in this uh, while loop, it will try to uh, get the request from the client. Then it uh, does conversion here. If the data is something like this, so you know this is the decimal notation, dotted notation of the IPv4 address. We have four part. Right? So for this one, you can you see have one or more digit separated by a single dot. This dot uh, escaped. Here we use a trick. Now you see the problem is here. There is uh, something hard coded inside the program, right? This is not the data. So we need to uh, get rid of this one and uh, substitute with this data. And control S and uh, save it. If it's a dot separate notation, then we convert to an integer. And you can check the online Talking about this pack and unpack, what does that mean? C means char, A means uh, integer. Here we pack it as four chars by get rid of those uh, dots. Then we unpack them as a uh, as integer then print out. So this is uh, quite hard to read. To read, You need to uh, check the documentation about this uh, pack and unpack. Now let's run it again. In this case, if we s supply an integer, now you see this uh, condition is uh, quite uh, simple. It uh, does not consider various uh, input. It just uh, assume the user input or either integer or this or dot separate uh, notation. Here we run it again. We paste this number. Oops. We 
we still get something like this. So it looks like on the this is the silver side, not the, the client side. Where do we have problem? What's in the client side? Yeah, on the client side. In the client side, we send the problem is uh, the server when I modified, I didn't run it again. Right here, the server is still running. So on the client side, you see there's no hot encoding. So let's uh, type Ctrl D, uh, Ctrl C to stop it and run it again. Then we run this uh, client, type the integer. Let's uh, type the integer first. Oh, I still get something. Uh, oh, so what a problem. I'm inside the lab time. So we check the contents P server here, P client is here, P server here. Can here, so it is. So what's the problem uh, here? I think I saved it right on the server side. Let's close this server. Control C, close it. How do we verify it? Uh, do want the updated version instead of that uh, updated version? And use a uh, grab P server. We know that is a number here, 192. If you grab 192 from this server, now you see uh, we don't have that number. So, which means it's an updated version. We run it again. On the client side, maybe the number uh, is this, this one. So, we can copy this one to have a try because we have an error in the server before. Right? Here you can see this number. It is, so it's right. It's do it reversely. Right? We get the correct answer. So how about that one? 888. So this is uh, the, the number we, we need. Type the number, get it in. So now it uh, worked. It worked as expected, but it uh, does not handle various uh, input exceptions. And the program, the task, the real question asks you to uh, modify this program to create a service here. Create a service with this template and this p server dot pl then we test the service with this p client dot pl and uncat currently we run it as a as a normal program right we run the server as a normal pro program here now let's control c to stop it as a service we don't want to uh, output or interact with the terminal window so we, in this server side, for those print, here you see this debug. We can uh, turn off the debug. So change the debug to zero. You will not see any uh, output on this server side. On the server side, you run it. You will not see any output on the client side. Then you type the IP address. On the client side, you get these things. On the server side, you you didn't see any uh, output. So how do we save the 
information generated by the save out usually we save it into log files and uh, it's out of the topic if you uh, suggest you to uh, modify the program and save the output of the server to the log files the log files are under this where logger here you can see where is the log files of various uh, programs right you can see uh, both uh, a port apt ladm and so on you can save those log files save the information from this pc up here into a log file you need to uh, generate a log file you can uh, find the information online by yourself now let's uh, convert this program this pro program into a service just as we did uh, on, on windows we, we converted one batch script into a service right here we can convert this uh, pro script into a linux service how do we do that follow these steps you can ch find further help from these references First, we create a file. This is IP for console service. Then we make a link, a soft link to this place from the user folder to the system folder. So we can. Uh, Follow this uh, help to complete here. We already have this file, right? so we use sudo to copy this file. This is IPv4 condor service to that lab. System D. System D, I press tab so it uh, outputted uh, four options for me. For me. Here, lab system D uh, user, so the name is the same, so you can just press enter because we copy this one to the folder. Tab your password. Okay, now we uh, you can uh, copy it to create a soft link. Then we activate and enable this service. Sudo system control status. We can have a try to see currently we don't have this service. That right? could not be found. Then uh, we enable it. sudo system uh, control enable x service. Failed when it does not exist. So what's the problem? Yeah, I have some uh, problem. You see, this is called X share, but this is called IPv4 kernel. No, I have problem. I have problem over there. If you check these things, we don't have those things. System D user. Now you have X share. We don't have X share over there. Service, but we don't have those things. Certainly, uh, this uh, sub link we also don't have. We have one. This was this one.
it's a soft link however a link to nothing so let's get rid of it okay we use this name IPv4 Serve it. And uh, the service is not called X service, it's called IPv4. When we uh, check this port, let's uh, go through this port uh, carefully. Where do we uh, specify? Here we specify a unit, a description, specify a service. Now this per change the pairs to the pserver.pl ok, what do we need to modify? this one is our pserver.pl we need to modify this part and uh, this part we create, let's create ipv4 com when we check these things uh, we didn't see any other place related, so we can Change all this uh, X service to IPv4 con. Please pay attention, these are comments. I change it, replace all of them to make them more readable. And the maintain one. It looks like uh, this one is a, a template copied from some place. I think it, uh, I copied from uh, my other. Uh, GitHub repository when I create a shared folder service but I forgot to modify these names right okay, now first let's uh, move this pserver.pl to some uh, nice place so what's a nice place to hold your user program Usually you can put it here, opt. So we can sudo make dir opt. Let's say uh, your service, my services, or user services. Here I create my services. Actually, there are just services uh, program. Service programs. Then you we copy this uh, p server to that place. My services p server here you see it's there, so we just copy this one. Paste it here. Save it. Maybe we need to add some quotes, so let's leave it like this. I don't know whether we need some quotes. Here we need to uh, check this thing again. First, I need to copy the file to this location. Ctrl C, I copy uh, my app sudo copy my IPv4 dot service to the target location then create a soft link or symbol link then we can check status Here you see the status inactive dead. Now let's enable it. And it says it created and enabled. It created a link for us from this part to this part. 
to this uh, system the user server. I create a link here. I need to also create one link for us. etc systemd. I create one link to this place. I have a systemd user. So I forgot which one is the talking, which one is the link. Help. Here you check this. Uh, this. Uh, here talk. This is the talk. This is a link name. So which means uh, when I create this soft link, this uh, target and this is this is a link name. And here you check this place. So it create a link. This link point to this target. We have this dot, so it create another link for us, not the link we created. Right now we can uh, start the service. How do we know it's started or not? We can use the status. Here you see it says active running. Okay, we have this one. Actually, you can use uh, the uh, message to find the system logger about the service. Here, did we uh, find a, a service about the ser the P server we just start? Grab IPv. Let's say, no, nope, we don't have uh, maybe in uh, another file. I just forgot. Okay, we started the service. Now, how do we interact with the service? We know the service is uh, listening on this port number. Here, yeah, this port number. So we can uh, check use a uh, net state to list out. Grab the port number four six three two three, and you see there is a TCP server listening on this port number. Okay, now we can use this client to interact with the service here. Tell the IP address. Right, we get the result. Copy, run it again. Now this is service is run in the background. You can always send your request to get the output. So this uh, service is uh, running in the background. The last uh, test, you are asked to use this uh, NCAT. So how do we use NCAT to uh, connect to us? To a server. NCAT localhost followed by the port number. We know the port number is uh, this one, right? 46323. And you see it's uh, connected. Then you are asked to type something. You type it here. Press enter. You get this uh, response. You type a response, for example, now we didn't get a number back, so maybe we cause trouble to the server. Broken pipe, so it's broken. Every time you get a you get a result, you will be disconnected. So you can check the program here, the server. Every time you got your result, you can see you will be sh shut down. So we need to uh, do it again.
copy page here, then we will shut down. Right, you press and you see a broken pipe. Okay, this is how you test the service with the P client and this NCAT. Okay, we complete our last lab.